So I definitely, I think I've identified as an activist since I was arrested during the Kavanaugh hearings, but I think I've only identified as an organizer since organizing and planning National Period Day. And organizing is where I kind of identify leaders. They're on the ground doing the work every single day. They know the names of the communities that are hit the hardest. They know the, they know all the district council members' names because they're calling them every single day to annoy them. Everyone always asks you like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And what are you going to do? Where, where do you want to reach? For a lot of our chapter members in our network, it's who we want to be right now. A lot of young people do not think that they can be leaders because they're young, they're too young. So we are breaking those concepts of how, like, what does a leader look like? For me, a period warrior is resilient, brave, and fearless. Going back to National Period Day last year, we got so much visibility, right? We were second trending on Twitter, and it was just huge for us. But with that positive press came some of the bad press that like many, many of our period warriors have never ever experienced before. And some of them were as young as like, what, 13 years old, Amir? And to see how well they handled that, they used that as motivation um, to really rally up and show how much support there are there is for this issue, for these issues, and um, how much more work we really need to do. When I first started period, one of the most common reactions I got from adults was, oh my gosh, you're so cute, right? Like, it is so cute that I'm trying to do something about this. With me, a lot of people are like, it's just not genuine. Like, people think I do this to impress someone. That's why, you know, I'm fighting for menstrual equity. Like, I hear that way too often. Another um, really common piece of pushback that we've received is like, oh, but money doesn't grow on trees, you know? Um, we can't really, you know, expand um, access to menstrual products on campus because it's not like, you know, money is, just grows like that. But every freshman at our university got a free iPad and um, toilet paper is always readily available for every student. That's the last thing to ever be cut from the budget. But surprisingly, menstrual products were the first thing. This whole process of viewed as a luxury and, um, personal items and not really necessities and that's the whole thing that we're trying to fight from the outside you look at period it's like oh they're fighting for menstrual equity right but us within the movement people who are within the movement understand that it's it's more than just giving someone tampons and pads right providing someone free menstrual products we know that it's a gender equality issue we know that it's a human rights issue one group is not going to be able to solve this issue or allow for this movement to be successful if you want it to be successful, you need, you need intersectionality, right? You need menstruators, non-menstruators, um, different races, different religions. So many of these people are just, they have no other option than to be activists, than to fight against the oppression that they're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. So that is why I am involved in this. That's why I go out and I raise my voice for other people and make sure that my privilege isn't going to let me not be in touch with the struggle that's happening around me. Activism became probably the most healing thing that had come into my life um, other than alcohol since sexual assault. And so I kind of just chased that high, uh, that activism high. And when Nadia says like activism saved my life, I really relate to that is because activism is also what keeps me sober. That's what I tell our chapters when they get started is that we have guidelines for you. We have materials. You can talk to me. You can talk to our team. But at the end of the day, it's down to you to start those connections, to start these partnerships, them feeling like they have the power to go from being an activist to then becoming an organizer in their community. And that's so powerful. And I think that that's something that period really, really pushes is creating these spaces for young people to thrive in.